So I am very excited to be chatting with Frederick Patneau today. He is a resource that I go to fairly often for information on, on raw food, since that is his area of expertise. He is the author of The Raw Secrets, The Raw Food Diet in the Real World, which is an awesome book, along with a few other books and hundreds of articles on his amazing site. Thank you for being with me, Frederick. It's awesome to get to talk to you. Well, good to be here, Heather. So what do you see as the main benefits of people eating a large percentage of their diet as raw? Well, I kind of might surprise you by saying it's not so much the foods you eat, but it's more the foods you don't eat that make a difference. And this is kind of important for people to understand because everybody's kind of looking for the magic pill or, you know, what can I eat more of uh, to improve my health or, or have more energy. And it's, you know, in my research, it's not so, what, what it shows is it's not so much what you eat that matters is what you avoid eating. So already by selecting, you know, of course we know fruits and vegetables are, are healthy and everybody knows that, but uh, most people don't realize that if you make most of your diet to consist mostly of fruits and vegetables, not only do you get the benefits from eating those foods, but also you get the benefit from not eating everything else that you would be eating um, on a normal diet or any type of diet. So, you know, the benefit is kind of twofold. It is, first, it displaces a lot of foods that are not healthy and a lot of foods that people think are healthy but are, in fact, not that healthy. And then, of course, you get the benefits from eating fruits and vegetables, which, you know, for many reasons are uh, the healthiest foods we can eat. They're easiest to digest. So what are some of the benefits that you've seen and that other people have seen in changes in how they feel. Well, I think that, that there's two types of people that get into raw foods and they get different benefits and then the program that they'll do will be different. The first category is people that really kind of need almost like a cleansing diet or a diet that is, is going to help them heal or let their body heal. So the, that diet is going to be uh, hopefully as much as possible a raw food diet. Because simply by doing that, it's just a very light diet, very easy to digest, uh, also very low caloric density. So that means the, the foods you eat don't contain a lot of calories per pound. And so it's very easy to lose weight on that diet to uh, just to feel better in general. So the benefits that these people will experience are generally pretty dramatic, like overcoming maybe some health problems they had in the past or generally feeling a lot more energy and also losing the weight very quickly and easily. And then also we want to look at people that are looking, that are not particularly sick, but are looking for a, a maintenance diet, perhaps uh, you're active. So of course, for those people, then the diet will need to be, uh, um, to be changed a little bit, to be less of a cleansing diet, but more like a sustainable diet that has sufficient amounts of calories. And uh, you know, the benefits might not be as dramatic for these people because, of course, the healthier you are, you know, the, the, less, the less you're going to feel the results and the more you have to gain out of this change in diet, the more uh, benefits you're going to feel. So what, what are kind of the general guidelines that you would recommend for people to eat? Maybe first as a cleansing diet and then uh, for a maintenance diet. Well, the, first, you, you might want to try eating only raw foods for a little while as a way, uh, you know, to, to, do a, to, to do a cleanse or mm -hmm. to cleanse your body. But I don't believe, like, the foods themselves don't, will not cleanse your body. It's not really how it happens. It's more that essentially you're eating a diet that is very easy to digest, very light, and also you're not eating all the stuff we talked about, mm -hmm. although we didn't go into the specifics, but there, you're not, n a lot of things you're not going to be eating. So that's how it works. So if you do this type of diet, generally I recommend to try it out for a week. So maybe you on eat only fruit and smoothies and green smoothies for an entire week. You're, you're going to feel some pretty, uh, pretty awesome benefits right away. So that's, that's just to get started. I wouldn't recommend that people keep eating only fruit and green smoothies for the rest of their lives, you know. Okay. Uh, but you can do that for a week or, in fact, a lot longer than a week, but just to get started. And then another change that I would recommend is just, just to change one meal at a time. So 
if you eat, for example, a uh, regular breakfast, you might want to switch that breakfast to a fruit breakfast, for example. Eat only fruit for breakfast or eat only uh, smoothies or green smoothies. Just keep it simple. Uh, replace one meal. And then ex experiment with introducing more fruit in your diet. There's a very simple experiment that has been done that showed that if people eat an apple before each meal, just one apple, uh, that apple might be like 75 calories or something, and they'll eat 75 calories less of the meal that is to follow. But if they juice that apple and drink apple juice before a meal, then they'll eat just as much. So it's very important to eat a lot of whole foods that have not been processed. If you remove the fiber, then uh, the cue to your brain that you've, you're full is just not, not happening. What about grains and beans? Do you, uh, do you see those as part of a healthy diet? I think grains and beans can be part of a healthy diet. Uh, they wouldn't be part of, like, let's say, a cleansing diet. Right. But um, on a diet that would be mostly raw, then you could include whole grains and beans as well. Have you made any big changes in your diet from when you first started eating raw? And do you do any changes with the seasons? Probably this is the biggest change I've done overall in my diet, not even counting raw foods and everything, is just the amount of fat that I that I eat um, is dramatically less than the amount of fat I used to eat even when I was a raw foodist. Hmm. So uh, by that I mean really avoiding all types of oils, especially refined fats like olive oil and so on. I mean I might still have them occasionally if it's in a food that I, I didn't prepare myself, you know, but I never yeah. eat food that, I never add oil to anything and I eat pretty small quantities of whole foods that contain fats like avocados, nuts, and seeds, etc. I still eat them, but not in, in, in large quantities. Because the fat content of your diet, it affects everything from the way your body handles your insulin and, and, and sugar transport to your cells and you know, the level of oxygen in your body, and etc. There's so many things that are affected by the amount of fat in your diet. You know, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, but as long as it's healthy fats, like cold-pressed olive oil or coconut oil. I mean, there's all these things, but all of these things are kind of looking at individual uh, nutrients, but overlooking the importance of the fat content in your diet. I mean, we could go into that, but that's, that's probably the biggest change that has made the biggest difference in my health is that. And as far as diet with seasons, I would say definitely during the summer, I eat a lot more fruit. And like, we're kind of at the, at the moment we're recording the interview, we're kind of at the a bad time for fruits, <laughs> you know, yeah. but starting, uh, you know, starting in the spring all the way into the fall, then the fruit quality is a lot better, and then so I eat a lot more of it during that time. What do you see as the biggest mistake that people make when trying to follow a raw diet? Well, the biggest mistake is thinking that raw foods in and of themselves are, uh, are the answer. So they'll, they'll think, oh, as long as I eat just more raw foods or all raw foods, then I'll be healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't look at the types of raw foods that they're eating, and their diet may be very imbalanced, especially when it comes to the fat content of their diet, like eat, uh, the things that I talked about, oils, nuts, and seeds, and nut butters, and, and uh, avocados, and so on. I mean, these foods, except for oils, can be healthy as long as you eat them in small quantities. For example, half an avocado at a time. Uh, per day, as opposed to you know several avocados a day or lots of nuts and seeds. So most people don't realize when they make these raw food recipes that contain a lot of fat that these recipes are are actually less healthy than than the cooked foods they used to eat, you know, or some cooked foods. So it's really important to understand the the concept of the fat content of the diet and uh, the, the balance of nutrients and calories in the diet. Right. The, um, the oils kind of reminds me of what you were talking about with the apple, where a lot of the, uh, the nutrients and the fiber have been taken away. So it's, uh, it's a lot more concentrated, right? Well, oil is concentrated fat. That's the most rich food you can ever eat. One tablespoon of oil will contain 120 calories. Uh, you would have to eat almost two apples to get the same number of calories <laughs> as in one tablespoon of oil. But what happens is oil has been, there's no fiber, there's nothing in it, so there's no sensation of being full 
and oil doesn't or fat doesn't satiate it as much as other foods. So it's very misleading to think that oils are uh, you know can be part of a healthy diet. Everybody adds oil. You go to a restaurant, they add massive amounts of oil. They've done studies where they simply took the fat out of people's food. So they they fed two different groups of people, either a fat-free diet, for example, uh, muffins and et cetera, foods that were made without fat, and then foods that were made with fat. And what they found is people, when they eat the foods with fat, they just eat more calories in general without even noticing it. And it's very easy to take the fat out of the I mean, I've, 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 met, I've, I've done that experiment with a lot of people where I took the fat out of their food. Um, I put my mom on, on a fat-free diet. She had ex- incredible results. And people don't miss the fat. They eat just as much food, maybe a little bit more food of the fat-free foods, but they eat dramatically fewer calories without even noticing. So that's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the problem with fat is that it's so concentrated in calories and it's, it's not satiating, so we don't notice that we're consuming extra calories. That's one of the problems. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the other foods that you think are really important to leave out of the diet in order to find health, no matter whether you're eating a lot of raw or 100% raw? What would you avoid? I would definitely avoid dairy products Mm -hmm. for for many, many reasons. Uh, the, The link between dairy products and certain cancers and is very well established. And also, there's no reason to consume dairy products. It's just a source of saturated fat. It's a source of contaminants in many cases. And it's not something we need in a healthy diet, uh, even though we're told we need it, but entire populations in the world don't eat a diet that contains dairy products like many Asian people, and they do perfectly fine. In fact, they they do a lot better than us. So dairy products are a big part of the the answer, leaving them out of the diet. People get incredible results just doing that. And I would say, of course, the fat and the oils is is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, just animal foods in general, like any food that contains a large amount of saturated fat, uh, meats, etc. And of course, fried food, uh, any fatty food, Restaurant food in general is especially bad, <laughs> yeah. um, so you got to be careful what restaurant you eat at, and you know know what what, what they put in their food and, and so on. But uh, most of, most of the stuff I I could tell you is not healthy is stuff that most people realize is not healthy. Most people know, you know, <laughs> yeah. if I eat potato chips is not he- that healthy. So that that we all agree uh, on. It's just there's certain things that people think are healthy, and that's why I focus on those things because. You know, I don't need to tell you that uh, that potato chips or French fries are, are not healthy, and but I might need to tell a few people that olive oil is not healthy. I don't want to focus on the negative. It's really about what you can eat that will satisfy you. So it's very important to once you know what not to eat to come up with recipes and ideas for what to eat for th- foods that would would satisfy you and um, you know get you to the results you desire in your health. Right. So what do you think are the most important things to focus on when people are making meals? They don't have a whole lot of time. What are the best foods that they can eat and, um, and what are some easy ways that they can incorporate that into a meal? It's really more about finding a few recipes that you personally like. Like we found that most people rotate about 10 recipes, 7 to 10 recipes. Like everybody rotates 7 to 10 recipes. If you think about it, uh, it's just easier for most people to eat the same foods over and over again and occasionally have something different. So most people have, you know, pasta one day and they have something else the next day and and then they bring back the same recipes and the same sandwiches and so on over and over because it's just easier that way. You know, once you find something you like, why not, you know, have it more often? So it's not about learning how to make, you know, 100 different recipes and and memorizing all the it's about knowing a few meals that you can enjoy you know, and and mastering them one at a time and then knowing, okay, if I eat that, I feel pretty good for, for, for you know, a good period of time. And maybe if I still feel hungry, I need need to eat more of it or I need to eat something different. And then once you've mastered these things one at a time and you have your repertoire of maybe seven or ten recipes that you really have nailed and you 
know them and, and you like them and you enjoy them, that's really important, then, then things become really easy. And then you can experiment with more complicated foods and recipes. Yeah, that's a great strategy. And that would kind of translate to foods probably as well, right? So if someone is looking at which vegetables to incorporate, it might not be about which one is the perfect vegetable, but maybe more which one they enjoy and will eat on a regular basis. Exactly. People might wonder, you know, should I eat more kale or more spinach or more romaine lettuce or watercress? Or should I eat, you know, oranges instead of bananas? And it doesn't matter. Just eat the fruits that you like the most and don't eat the foods that you don't like. You know, and of course, you can grow a taste for certain foods that you didn't like before by trying them more often. And uh, you know, that, that can be done as well. But uh, it doesn't matter which fruits and vegetables you eat. I would say the categories of food you need to have in your diet are greens in general. When I say greens, I mean uh, leaves, not just vegetables that are green. Like asparagus is a green, but it's not really a green like uh, the same way that a, a green leaf is. So f a green leaves in general are an important part of the diet. And then fruits are very important as well. And then a small quantity of nuts and seeds and or avocados, although it's not absolutely essential to have those as well. So those would be part of a, a raw food diet. And then you talked about other foods that could be part of a healthy diet or Whole foods in general, foods that have not been overly processed like whole grains and beans, etc. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and thanks for sharing such amazing information and tips. I got a lot out of it, so I hope everybody else will too.